Today, you're going to hear six levels of building wealth, how to get to financial freedom. You know, building up wealth is a bit like building up a building. You know, the first part that you need to do is the foundation, correct? Without it, everything crumbles. So you need to get the foundations right. And from there, you can lay on level one, level two, level three, and subsequently as many levels as you can reach. Now, you cannot skip levels. You cannot skip steps. And that's why today, in these six levels, I'd like to show you what to anticipate moving in this journey. And for myself personally, I think I'm at level five to level six. So if you're curious to find out what exactly they are, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Without further ado, let's start with level number one, which is saving up your emergency cash. You need this emergency cash buffer. In Singapore, there are not many who probably are deemed to be in the poverty zone. However, there are definitely many families who are living month to month. In those family situations, you'd see that their bills are paying up because some months they have excess and some months they just have no money to pay off the bills. And when they stack up, it brings financial stress to the family. That's why if you look closely in some HDB neighborhoods, you'll see a social service office. And I'm actually try to explain how does this work to my boy to help him understand that he's actually in a very blessed situation. Having that emergency cash buffer is very important because it brings you a peace of mind. It removes any worry that next month your basic needs such as electricity and food cannot be met. It will remove you if you are in a rut because that financial stress is not easy to deal with. And you know, if you have this emergency cash buffer, you would save yourself from the temptations of get rich quick scheme as well as the headache of not being able to pay off credit cards. That is why this first layer is mightily important. Build up your emergency cash buffer. For younger working adults, it could be as little as three months. For older adults nearing retirement, quite possibly keep a 12 months of expenses as emergency cash. With that, let's move on to level two, which is to pay yourself first. This concept of paying yourself first is 101 in terms of financial success. And if you're a young working adult or going to graduate soon, it's actually a habit that you should build from your first paycheck onwards. What it actually means is to not save up whatever you have spent from your income. Because in that sense, you leave yourself vulnerable to spending everything that you bring in and you have nothing saved up for a rainy day. Paying yourself first simply means that you set aside this $500 first. And if your income is $3,000, you set aside $500, remaining $2,500, is the maximum you do with your expenses. Now I use $500 because I think that is about the minimum I would recommend anyone regardless of income. The reason is because with $500, you mean 6,000 a year. And in 20 years, it's a mere $120,000 only. That is very unlikely enough for financial freedom. But I do understand that different families have different situation. And some may still feel saving $500 a month is a difficult task to achieve. In that situation, I will always strongly recommend to focus all your efforts at improving your income. You might need to do side hustles, you might need to do part-time job, you might need to network, you might need to improve your own CV. That is all in hopes of finding better employment and to derive better income. And when you pay yourself first, it's important to funnel that savings to an investment account. Do a dollar cost averaging regular investing program. You know, an investment account is something you use to save monies into because monies that go in should not be coming out again. They should be working fully towards your financial freedom. Which means also, if you need a new car or need renovation money, it should not be extracted from this investment bucket because if you deplete it, you go back to square one. So again, see it as a one direction in until retirement, keep saving into this investment account and the fruits of your labor will eventually come. With that, let's move on to level number three which is this concept of investing an equal amount for every dollar you spend on luxury. Some people use a one-to-one -one rule, which means if you go for a good vacation costing $3,000, you'd automatically first invest $3,000 before you're ready to take on that vacation bill. And this whole one-to-one -one matching rule is just to remind yourself that you need to comfortably afford something before you make that purchase. Some people even advocate a two-to-one ratio, but I'll leave it to you as to which fits your situation a bit better. In many ways, when you spend for things that you want instead of need, such as a new phone or a new luxury bag, those are typically geared towards image and status and feeling that sense of comfort and reward. They can be purchased occasionally. It's not that we need to be stingy and stuff and never see nicer things in life. 
what you need to balance it against is this concept of delayed gratification. When you do a one-to-one -one ratio, you spend on something and yet you put some monies aside for future. Let's move on to the next level, which is level number four. Invest 50% of your pay increment. The very simple reason of this is to prevent lifestyle creep. What exactly is lifestyle creep? That is a concept whereby you would start to spend more as you earn more. And right now, if you are just at the start of your working career, you may not have seen many pay increment jumps yet. You may be thinking, why do some people actually start spending more when they earn more? That's actually where we need to understand what would change along the journey. You know, when you start to earn more, very naturally, the circle of friends around you are also earning more. What happens at the point of time is everybody starts to compare against each other at a different income level and they start to purchase things that previously could not be easily afforded. Imagine you're an army officer at a cadet level, maybe drawing $3,000 a month and all your closest peers were all drawing the same pay. Naturally, everybody was leading a simpler life. But with a promotion to become a middle level officer, you start drawing a $6,000 pay and that's where everybody starts to buy their first car. And when the promotion comes in the subsequent few years, you promote to a senior officer and draw $9,000 per month pay, you realize that everybody at that situation will be looking at upgrading their house. So for you, as well as everybody in this community, let's focus on financial freedom. Financial freedom means you have an investment pot that is 25 times that of your annual expenses. Which means also, if your expenses go up, your financial freedom figure needs to go up. And if you understand that concept, it might become a mirage because as you earn more, you spend more and you realize this financial freedom figure just keeps getting higher and higher. And the consequence is a red race whereby work is always needed for income to pay off expenses. So the golden rule again is if possible, save 50% of your pay increment. And once you prioritize that, you can feel happy to spend whatever extra increments that you have earned. The next level to watch out is level five, which is to get your first $1,000 per month in passive income. To me, this is a must for everyone to get to. And I believe if you have been a follower of this channel, you have seen me advocate how to get to financial freedom in many methods. And I'd like to suggest $1,000 for you to focus on because that is finally a tangible enough figure. You know, when passive income is $20, $30, it doesn't really pay any of the bills and you can't really rely on it to fully retire from your current work. But $1,000 is the first four-figure passive income that finally seems reasonable for anyone to quit. And how to get $1,000, it can be done with, for example, a full REIT portfolio of $240,000. Why $240,000? Because REITs in general pay about 5% per annum. And if you break down to monthly payouts, you realize that that is $1,000. If you're new to investing in REITs, check out a previous tutorial I've done before on the Scythe REIT Plus portfolio and that could be a very simple figure for you to build investments in REITs. But REITs alone is a particular sector. You should never rely on it fully for your entire retirement portfolio. Hence, if we were to diversify a bit more, because you should have banks, you should have Asian equities, you should have global equities, bonds and fixed income, then a lower dividend yield should be factored into the equation. So if we were to stick with $1,000 a month with 3% yield, that means you should aim for investment pot worth $400,000. Now speaking to here, let me show you exact numbers that you need to set aside to reach these figures. If you were to look again at getting $240,000, what it requires you is to save $1,600 for 10 years and compound this at a 5% per annum rate of return. You realize you can get to $240,000. If you're aiming for $400,000 pot in 10 years, Simply do an investment of $2,700 per month for 10 years and let's assume 5% per annum rate of return and you can get to that $400,000. Think again, start planting your financial freedom tree today and very soon you'll be big enough to shelter you through your financial storms. At this moment of filming, I'm comfortably past level 5 at the age of 38 and I wish to assure you that everybody can achieve this. If you believe in this message, smash the like button and leave any questions you have on the financial freedom journey in the comments sections below. Once you've gotten sizable passive income, the next level to look at is level six. This level may not be a must to get to, but let's broaden the discussion and understand what it actually means. Level six is to live off fully on your dividends and have more than enough to further reinvest. Now the numbers are gonna get big and everybody's priorities are different, I understand that. And I've also shared on this channel, if you die, 
with $1 million, you may have $1 million too much. You may have taken the concept of delayed gratification a bit too far. Or you have held on to that fear of depleting your investment pot a bit too much, such that some life experiences have been missed. At this level, financial freedom is attained already. And more than that, the amount that you can get from passive income sources are actually bigger than your expenses. If you think about it, if your passive income is bigger than your expenses, there is a surplus to reinvest. And this snowball of wealth builds even further and possibly could become infinite. That is a simple explanation of how wealthy families are able to build trust for generations. However, with that, I also like to pull up Warren Buffett's wisdom for all of us to think through. Warren Buffett has mentioned, I believe in giving my kids enough so they can do anything, but not so much that they can do nothing. That is the reason why he's donating a large part of his wealth to charities. I believe Bill Gates is also doing the same thing. And also some of you who are watching this are also in this high net worth space. So let's put on some numbers to explain how things work. If your investment pot is $4 million, for example, and you have a 3% dividend yield coming out from that pot, that means that your per month passive income is $10,000 a month. Assuming that you are retired and spending $8,000 a month, that means that there is an extra $2,000 a month that can be reinvested into the markets. And if this $2,000 per month is reinvested, it becomes more than $300,000 in 10 years' time again. Now you see, your investment pot now has grown a further 300000 and it becomes a virtuous cycle. With my money builds on money, there's more than enough fruits to pay off the expenses, bearing any bad investment decisions or things that go catastrophically wrong. So we've come to the six levels for today. Let's recap. The first level is to save up emergency cash. The second level to build on that is to pay yourself first. That is the one one of financial success. Level 3 reads to invest an equal amount for every dollar that you spend on luxury. Level 4 is to invest 50% of your pay increment. Level 5 is to get your first $1,000 per month in passive income. This is a space that I believe everybody should get to. Level 6 is to have an investment pot big enough that you can live off your entire expenses on it and there are actually surpluses that you can continue to snowball to build generational wealth. With that, let me know your thoughts and questions and as always, smash the like and subscribe button. And with that, I wish you all the best in your financial freedom journey. Check out some of my previous tutorials on financial freedom. Maybe one of them can help you understand numbers that you need to know today. Take care as always. See you there too. Goodbye.